In this video, I'd like to talk about how I'm building my SaaS applications fast and more specifically, how I'm building my most recent application in 31 days. You know, there's a common idea that it takes months, if not years to build out a profitable software as a service application. However, after looking online and talking to some of my developer friends, this doesn't really have to be the case. In fact, you can develop good applications really fast if you're building it out the right way. And so we will go over how I'm coming up with the idea for my software as a service applications, the four principles that I am following to build them fast, how I'm launching the application, and also the mindset that I have when building out these types of applications. And so with that being said, Let's get into the video. And so first things first, right? What is the application and how am I coming up with idea? And so the idea for my most recent application that I am building is a boilerplate code for software as a service. You know, I've built some pieces of software in my time, in my time like I'm old. I've had multiple people in my Discord, YouTube, and a lot on TikTok that are just asking me how I built out my software. And an idea came to me like, why not just build out a ready-made piece of software that people can just pay for, install, and build out their software or website a lot quicker with the, that piece of boilerplate code. And after seeing people like Mark Lou, who's this awesome software developer, who's he's a big inspiration of mine, he was doing this and I just saw how the response of how many people loved it. And I just thought to myself, I could probably do the same thing. Let me try this out. And so for you, right, you'll probably have the exact same way of coming up with a business idea. It usually lies in something in your own experiences and problems that you are facing. And always remember what we say in this channel is that whenever there's a problem, that is where the money is. Business is all about solving problems. And the best thing I've noticed at least with this, with coming up with an idea, is that it generally does not matter. The more that you do shit, the more you're gonna make money because you're gonna find the right thing. If you're too obsessed with what the idea is and the perfect idea, because I spent months doing this, you know, you will never find the right one because there's always gonna be problems with their idea. The better thing to do is to just look at the problems that you're facing. For me, it was finding boilerplate code. I had to build up so much just to get very little done and build out that thing so that you can sell. And usually you want to come up with this pretty quickly, but not too quickly. You know, you want to have a good idea. I came up with the idea in just a day of just sitting down and figuring out what I had to do. So that's just one day out of the 31, right? So the easiest way to come up with an idea is to just look at the problems that you are facing and building out, in our case, software in order to solve that. Now, the next aspect of building out my SaaS and the main part, obviously, is building out the application. And, you know, before deciding that I was going to build out a software as a service application in 31 days, I was actually quite scared that I could finish or that I wouldn't be able to finish something within a month. Most of my applications like the Nizi Abbey platform and some of my other AI platforms in the past have taken me both five months for the Nizi Abbey platform and like two or three months for all the other ones. And I had this belief that applications had to take a very long time to develop or at least you know to build out something nice however i'm following a four-step process that i've called the nizzy method you know let's just call it that in order for me to have a process for building out applications faster and get rid of the dumb stuff that wastes time and so the first aspect of the four-step process of the nizzy method is to follow the simple law now i'm calling this the law i don't usually like to use that term because like why well, use law but as i've been coding for now over I say a year and a half, I've noticed that simple doesn't mean better. Let's actually write this down. Simple does not equal better, okay? Again, I wasted months on building out the Nizi Abbey platform just recently, like just a couple of weeks ago. I was building out features that I did not need, didn't want, and just wasted my time months on building shit that I was never gonna use. For example, I wanted to build out a face conferencing aspect of the application. I didn't need that yet okay i may want it in the future but for now i could just not have done that and just release the product a lot earlier and so what i'm doing for the simple law is you'll see how i'm gonna um, why i'm building it out in 31 days it makes a lot of sense all i'm doing okay is simplifying as much of the building process as possible for example i am only going to have one page which is the landing page to purchase the piece of software and in the landing page right in the one page 
we're going to have testimonials. We're going to have the card to purchase. So card purchase. And finally, some videos describing the product. Who I liked doing this so much, who I loved, was the guy from Shipfast, who is Mark Liu. I highly recommend you go watch him. He is much, much, much better than almost every entrepreneur developer out there. I just, you know, I'm a big fan of him. But look, his software just has one page and that's it. One page with testimonials, videos, and a way to purchase it. He's not doing anything too crazy, not going over the top with extra features, just the product and the examples of you know what you can do with the product and a way to purchase it. That's all he's doing and that is exactly what I'm trying to do. And so the next aspect of the Nizi method is more so on the work that we are doing. And for that, we are going into something called obsession mode. Hope you're liking the new names. And so this story will make sense in a second, but I watch a lot of NBA and in the NBA, there are three types of modes or aspects of a season that players go into. There is the in season, which is like the regular season where they just play games. There is the uh, playoff season where they're playing like really important games for like the championship. And finally, there is the off season. And it's well known that in these, uh, you know, different modes of, you know, seasons that the players in the regular season play middle, you know, they don't play too hard on themselves, but they try a bit. In the playoffs, they play extremely hard, like they, they go all in, even if they're injured. And finally, in the off season, they, they take off a lot of time, like they, they don't play at all and they recover. And I think as developers, we should have a developer season. And look, I usually code for like maybe two, three or four hours in a regular coding day. However, in when developing software applications, what I'm doing instead, and I think what I've done mistakes in the past is I did not code more. So instead of two, three, four hours, I'm probably gonna be coding maybe eight hours when developing these software applications. And so rather than maybe condensing or not condensing my building over a four month period, you know, instead of having it over four month period of coding, maybe a couple hours per day, I'm coding for eight or nine hours per day, but a much, much condensed time. And look, is this sustainable? Absolutely not. For a long period of time, I'm talking years, decades, this will kill me. It will not be good because I'll hate coding, but in a 30 day period where, you know, I'm just hyper-focused on reaching the goal and trying my best to get this over and done with, I think that is sustainable because after that, you know, I could just rest, recuperate, and then go into the next project. And so much more hours in a short period of time, I think is the best way, uh, or at least what I'm doing to uh, build out the application faster because I'll get more work done. And the third aspect of the Nizi method is the importance technique. And so every developer has experienced this in some way, shape or form. We're building out an application, we're building out the features, and we start focusing on features that don't really matter. We're hyper-focused on the background color. We're trying to put or align cards in the center. We're focused on the one pixel padding. And what tends to happen is once we're focused on things that don't matter, our application becomes something that we don't want it to be. And I think this is where I am messing up a lot. I tend to focus on things that do not matter, like the specific coloring or many things that a user doesn't really care about that will be nothing but time wasted if we continue to focus on them. And so instead, what I'm trying to do is only focus on the things that are important to, to build out the application. Kind of like in the simple hour where we're trying to keep it simple. Here, we're just focused on features rather than looks. And what I try to ask myself is, will the user use this? And if they don't or they don't care about it, then I'll push it to the side until I release the application. Then I can make an update so that it's a feature that will come later. And the fourth aspect of the Nizi method is belief. And before you start ridiculing me, hear me out. In my opinion, belief is one of the most important things that you can have in development, business, whatever it may be. And for the longest time, I believed that I could not develop software applications in a month or two month period. In my opinion, I thought that it had to be done in four, five or six months because of X, Y, Z. But after looking at YouTubers, developers, people online, even experienced people in person, I just noticed that they have a different approach to development than myself. Mostly from believing in these aspects like obsession and, and you know, 
focusing on simple applications and important things. And I think belief is a very big part of it. And think about it, if you don't believe, so does not believe, then it's impossible to achieve the thing that you're trying to set out. And there's no downside to believing that you can accomplish something. Worst case scenario, right? I don't achieve the goal I'm setting out, but at least I tried my best to get this done in 30 days. If I didn't believe it in the first place, I have a 0% chance of achieving that goal. But because I believe in myself, or you believe in yourself, we believe in ourselves, then there's a chance that we will get further or 100% chance actually of getting further than we would have without believing it. And I just think there's no losing to believing. Like, sure, it's like a voodoo thing where like, you, you believe in yourself, believe. I think there is something to it and just believing in yourself in some way and knowing that down in, in your own heart that you can, or people have done in the past, then it's really difficult to not go far. And so we've got the Nezi method done. The third aspect of how I'm building out my SaaS applications fast is on mindset. Now, this again is one that we don't really talk about in this space. It's more common in the business space, but not really in coding. The type of mindset at least that I'm referring to is a shitty mindset. And I think the best way to describe the shitty mindset that I have is by telling you uh, the story that goes along with this. So I have a Discord server with over 900 people and 900 of anything, especially human beings in one group, is bound to have some problems, you know, arguments, racist people, bigots. And you know, a couple of days ago, that exact situation happened. There were a few people ridiculing my content and they were noting that I, I made a few mistakes on a video that I was uh, describing. And you know, they're saying really mean things like I was super inexperienced, that I'm not a good developer, stuff like that, you know? And you know, a lot of people in that situation, or at least my past self especially, I would have been upset at those people for ridiculing me, you know, like I, would, like my ego would have done that. But I was actually fine and I was actually happy that people told me that I was making a mistake. Was the uh, ridiculing and the things that they were saying right? In my opinion, not really. And the way that they were saying it as well was not good. But I was appreciative that this was brought up to me because I could make a change and that I could take this and improve on myself. And I think as developers, and this relates to coding, is that we should expect to make mistakes along the way and that the application will be or have some roadblocks. You know, a lot of the times as developers, we think that everything's gonna be perfect, it's gonna be amazing. And as soon as we run into a roadblock, which is inevitable when developing, we freak out, we get mad, we get scared, we're, you know, we get nervous. But if we expect if we expect it to go wrong, if we expect to make mistakes, we put away our ego for a bit and just do the work in front of us and learn from our mistakes, I think that is where the best developers are made because it's impossible to lose. How can you beat someone that enjoys making mistakes because they learn from them? You can't. They're impossible to beat because there's nothing that brings them down. And that's what, it, what I'm really trying to do here is instead of thinking to myself that it's gonna be perfect, and that everything's gonna go exactly right, I am expecting it to go wrong. Maybe it's the amount of time it takes, maybe it's the application, maybe it's someone doing something to me that ruins the application, you no know, hacks me. But I'm expecting things to go wrong, and I think having that negative sort of view on it, a shitty mindset per se, then it's better than not having that. Because if someone just thinks everything's gonna be perfect, firstly, they're delusional, and it's bound that something's gonna go wrong, right? So yeah, shitty mindset. And so the final aspect of launching my SaaS application in 31 days, which I will hopefully do this month, is the launch. I'm not gonna talk about this too much because launch is a small part of it and you know, I'm not there yet and I haven't done it too much. So I don't really wanna talk on something that I'm not very experienced on. But how I'm launching this is not through some sort of paid advertising or anything like that, but through social media. Now I've talked about this at large scale with marketing the software as a service, but I think this is the future. I think social media for developers and for marketers is the future. And you know, for the longest time, I was a local host developer. I love saying that. And I was just too afraid to showcase what I was building. But 
I think there's something to just showing off your product and getting feedback on it. And I think social media is the most forgiving and best place to do it because there's billions of people on there and it's relatively easy to have thousands of people see your product. And I don't know about you, but people that I've bought from, at least like education wise or invested in are people on social media. Alex Hermosi, I bought all, all of his books. People like, you know, I don't know, Iman Gatsi, who I haven't bought anything from him, but I love his content. I definitely would buy something from him. But people like that, it's just, you find them on social media. And I think people our age, relatively speaking, we're men like aged 18 to like 25 here. We are on social media a lot. If we post educational content or something that people value, then they're more likely to buy your shit. And I think launching on there, by that, I just mean talking about it, bringing it up and just letting people see the product and know about your product you are 10, 20 times more likely to have someone purchase it or at least know about your product. Because I, don't, I just don't like paid advertising. It just icks me because no one, it's, it's hard to sustain a paid advertising if you're small. I think there's value to it once you grow, but where we are now with the, you know, just where we're at, we're not, we don't have a ton of money to invest in advertising. Launching on social media is hands down the best possible thing to do right now. And yeah, that is the four step or eight step process with the second step of how I'm building out the software as a service application in 31 days. Again, building out the idea is just finding out your own problems and then solving that need because it's obviously going to be people that have that and just going through your own experiences and going through it that way. Next up, building out the application. All I'm doing is keeping stuff simple, being obsessed. So hyper obsessing over building out the application, importance technique, you know, focusing on what is important, not the many details. And final aspect of this step is to just believe in myself and believing in yourself to getting this shit done. And the third aspect that I'm following is a shitty mindset, expecting it to go wrong and knowing that I will be able to overcome the mistakes that I make. And finally, I'm gonna be launching on Twitter and YouTube and just talking about it. And hopefully in the coming months, it will start to pick up steam if the product is good. And by the way, this is just what I am following I know that there are different beliefs, different people that will follow different things, but this is just one that I think I could do and one that I think is the right thing just off my own experiences and other people's experiences that I know of. But yeah, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. What are we like 10 minutes in, I don't even know, 12 minutes into the video. Um, if you're still watching, then you've obviously liked the content. So please like and subscribe. It costs you nothing, but it means the world to me. And if you want to join the Discord server, which is good. I know I talked a little shit about it, but I love the Discord, our Discord server. The best. I love it. Then I'll leave that down below. Okay. Happy coding. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.